peace. Supreme understand how to hustle and win. Hustlingwin.com. Supreme Design Online.com. Visit the website. Get some free excerpts. Find out that I actually publish books, man. Some of y'all be re watching these videos, not knowing that there's some literature to go along with it. You know, I'm not just talking. I am talking, but there's, there's some information to go with this. It's just commentary to add on. Anyway, I was thinking about something. I figured I'd add on. Because I've been doing a lot of studies of indigenous cultures. And, and, and I wasn't just inspired by watching the movie Avatar. Um, I've really been reading up on anthropology and just indigenous people from all over the world. Um, doing some research on the Andaman Islanders and, 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 and uh, uh, some of the so-called uncontacted tribes. And really, they, they none that are really all the way uncontacted. They all done had some kind of interaction with some Europeans because Europeans is going after them hard. But um, in studying them, I've come to some realizations, right? Original culture is probably the best thing you're going to find on this planet. I'm talking about our indigenous culture, the way that we used to eat, the way that we, I mean, you know, if you can get really all the way back down to the roots, to like how it used to go down in the beginning. It's just like when you look at a baby, like the things that we did um, in our earliest stages is the most pure and not simplistic in the sense of being primitive, but simplistic in the sense that like, yo, you really don't need all that complexity all the time. I, it's when things get complex that they get complicated. Um, I look at how children like my daughter right here behind me are naturally inquisitive and they discover the world and they do scientific things that um, show that they're employing the scientific method like at such an early age she's trying to figure out how the world works and how she works and how she interacts with the world but then as we get older we start doubting ourselves we start having fear and we start having issues with with people over petty things that don't really matter and um, you know as a people that's where many of us are at now and of course that's been worsened exacerbated if I would like you know if I can use a big word that's been worsened um, by, you know, European domination. As a matter of fact, it's been multiplied, you know, exponentially, you know, because it, it was nothing like this. And that's what I want to get into. Because when we look at the condition of people of color, particularly black and brown people in the wilderness of North America, you know, people love to point fingers. Oh, look at what black people are doing. Look at what these people are doing. Look at what those people are doing. You know, um... They sagging their pants. They cussing in front of their grandmas. You know, they doing this, they doing that. They having sex all at, at 10 years old. Yeah, I mean, yeah, all that's happening. But unless you can show me how this was also happening in the indigenous cultures of Africa, West Africa, you're not convincing me that this is something inherent to black people. What you're really telling me when you point out all these things is that this is what white people do to you. This is what white cultural domination this is what the rape of a country of a nation does to you of a continent or the rape of a let's be real the whole continent carved up divided between european countries and they had they way with them and then they we know the people that they brought over they really i mean they stripped them of everything including their language stripped them of the knowledge of themselves of any connection to their original culture and those people that were able to retain it those people were outcasted those people were made to look like fools. If you had any elements of your original culture, they made you out to be the biggest savage and dummy, anything they could, to have you not want to be your own self, to not have you not want to retain any vestiges of your original culture. Your original culture where, you know, the things that were produced by the community were shared by the community, where responsibility was distributed evenly between the people, where everybody's opinion was respected, where everybody's abilities were respected even if they were different because everybody got to play a part. Where men and women, it wasn't no man dominating no woman. The man played his role, the woman played her role. But everybody's role was important. But And everybody knew their role too. It wasn't that much confusion either. You know, and then the problems that we did have, you look at indigenous nations, particularly in Africa, you look at any of them weapons that was built before the Europeans introduced guns. All them knives, besides maybe like the Zulu spears, all them knives and weapons and swords was non-lethal. Man, sometimes a blade was curved to the point where you could only use it for decoration. All you could do is halfway cut somebody, nick somebody. Because the wars wasn't about no genocides. It wasn't about no, we going to kill the whole people. We, it's like we just going to show them like, yo, this is where our, our land, we want to be right here. Our land is right here. We want to be right here. Y'all stop stop stepping over our little area. You know what I mean? Y'all can, you know, if, you, if we decide to move on from this land, y'all can have it too. But, you know, we doing this right now. But we, no, wasn't no thing like, okay, 
we want to take over everything that they got, so we just going to murder all of them. When did that start happening, though? Well, between the Hutus and the Tutsis in Rwanda, it happened when the Belgians came in. You know, and if you study the history of all these places, it we didn't, there ain't no place where people of color, original people, started acting savage and completely inhumane. When you talk about the a man's inhumanity to man, for those of you that are, that are, that are well read, when you talk about man's inhumanity to man, that didn't start until European cultural domination. So when you look at, that's how I do it. I build and I knock her right out. I hope you ain't asleep though. <laughs> Anytime I get into building, she just be. That's how. That's how I put her to rest. Um. Anyway, European cultural domination on the original people in the wilderness, North America got us doing all of these things that we weren't doing when the missionaries and when the European traders first came to Africa. Because if you look at their accounts, they don't have no accounts of us doing none of that. Man, they respected the societies that they encountered. And the ones that didn't respect us because they had this thing where they just could not recognize and respect the greatness of the black people they encountered, they made up stuff. They said, oh, well, you know, the women are all lustful and sexual. Why? What was their justification? A, they were raping them. And so you're going to say somebody's lustful and sexual because you're raping them. B, because they, there wasn't no shame so the women could walk around bare-chested or have they, you know, have they body shown because they didn't have to worry about it in their society. You got to worry about that around in a European dominated society because a European dominated society is dictated by lust and power and all those other, you know, awful things. And they said, oh, the women have big butts. That must mean that they're more into sex. You see how savage somebody got to think? And so this is the justification that they used. This was what was in their mind and they transferred their lustful ideas onto what well, among uh, we didn't have no problem with there ain't no words for premarital sex in indigenous um, pre-european uh, African languages really in no indigenous languages ain't no ain't no illegitimate children ain't no words for that ain't no words for jail ain't no words for illegitimate children ain't no words for premarital sex there ain't no words for those things because not to say those things never happen but those things were just completely outside of the norms of that society real talk so, I mean, I'm talking about, I've been to Africa recently, and the brothers that I was kicking it with, they didn't even have sex like that. They wasn't even chasing after girls like that. They was talking to girls to talk to girls. But I'm going to tell you who was having sex. The girls was having sex with the white tourists, and the dudes was having sex with the white female tourists. It's the Europeans, and then the, the homosexuals was having sex with the homosexual European tourists. And it wasn't even, the, the Africans wasn't even homosexual. They just was doing it to get money from the European tourists. So that just shows you. Okay, this is what happens when you get around them. What, you, can you show me some indigenous examples of torture? Nah. Nah. Even that little Chinese torture stuff, man, that stuff is... Be, uh, you gotta get the history on that. You, get, you, gotta go, you gotta go through the long history. But you're not gonna find no indigenous ex examples of torture. But when I went to Prague in the Czech Republic, you got a video on YouTube at the, at the damn European Torture Museum. I'm talking about they got a museum and the European tourists in there excited. I'm talking about they acting like they're at Disney. And this awful stuff, just click on the video, you'll see it. And this is something they invented. This, I mean, this is something they invented. And now, if when you see like a black gangster that tortures uh, 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 somebody to get some information, to get some money, or to do whatever, that ain't something we invented. We invented a lot of things, but we didn't invent inhumanity and cruelty and savagery and and lack of dignity matter of fact that was one of the things that offended Europeans so much when they encountered people of color that it, they were like how are these people walking around half naked with their head held high like they got dignity and they can't do that for them nudity is a mark of their shame just like that Adam and Eve story just think about all that next time you want to point the finger at people of color in America unless you can show me how people of color pre-European contact acted the same damn way. Premarital sex and going to jail and, you know, whatever else you figured out is the, stig the negative stigma of black America. Don't talk to me about it. Don't talk to me about it because all you're doing is proving my point that Europeans really fucked us over. Excuse my language. Had to throw one in for you. Peace.